Mind control is hard because it's not even possible. You can't be in the middle of a thought and will yourself to another thought. Law of attraction doesn't let go of you that fast. If you find yourself in the middle of a thought that doesn't feel good, what do you do? Just flail about because it doesn't feel good? So it seems then that it's what you do before you get into that situation that is where your real power is. So if you wait until you're in the middle of a negative thought and then you try to change it, it's slow going and it's hard and you're not good at it. No one is because law of attraction is very powerful. So doesn't it seem prudent to do some preliminary things? When you wake up in the morning, you don't have thoughts raging, but your habit of thought sometimes carries you somewhere else. And so listen to yourself arguing for your limitation. Yes, Abraham, when I wake up, my thoughts are raging. No, they're not. Yes, they are. 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 All right, have it your way. Have a stubborn, miserable day. <laughs> Let's just lay this out in a really logical way. If thinking about what I want attracts what I want and thinking about what I don't want attracts what I don't want, which do you choose? Thinking about what I want. If thinking about what I want feels good because it harmonizes with my inner being and thinking about its absence feels bad because it doesn't harmonize with my inner being then I know I want to think about what I want if law of attraction responds to the thought I've got going and law of attraction logically just brings me more and more and more of the thought I've got going and since there is no ending or bottom to any thought, whatever I'm thinking about, wanted or unwanted, is going to become more and more and more and more. But what if there were a way that you could begin the direction of your thought, the reaching for a thought, the leaning toward a thought, or even the control of a thought? What if there were a way to reach for control of thought before it had gone so far in the direction of what you don't want. Well, there is. That's what we're saying. That's what meditation will give to you. If I can't control my thought once I get into a thought because law of attraction is going to keep perpetuating the thought I'm in, and if I am incapable of quieting my mind, then is there any way that I can ever be a deliberate creator? Sadly, no. If none of these things work for you, then you will never be able to be a deliberate creator. Now we know that you can do it, but if you don't know that you can do it, then you can't do it. So here we have finally found the unanswerable question. There's no hope. That's what a stubborn person will bring you. No hope. I'm so sure that I can't do this, that I will not let myself do this. We're playing with you a little bit, but do you really believe that you can't quiet your mind? Here's the reasoning that we're wanting to apply to this. It's harder to change a thought once it gets going, but it's easier to change a thought in the early stages before it gets going so hard. It's like the story that we've told for years about standing on top of the hill with your car in San Francisco and you take the car out of gear and you release the brake and you decide you're just gonna nudge it a little bit from behind and see what happens. And you're pretty sure what's gonna happen because you know about gravity and you know about the hill and that car is just gonna end up down there in the bay. But you decide you'll do it anyway. So you nudge it just a little bit. And then right before the inertia and the gravity and the natural laws of the universe get hold of it and move toward an outcome you really don't want because it just barely got started, you just jump right out in front of it and you stop it. It didn't take much. It bumped right up against you and it stopped because the momentum hadn't taken it very far. But if you didn't come to your senses sooner and you're down at the bottom of the hill trying to stop it, you're not going to stop it. And so meditation is the top of the hill. And mind control is at the bottom of the hill. And mind control will get you run over by your car. <laughs> and meditation will give you control all day long. 
it's worth giving yourself just a little bit of permission to do that. Now, we're too far into the day to convince you now. Too much has gone on. You're more stubborn now than you would be when you first wake up. So when you first wake up, if we were standing in your physical shoes, that's when we would meditate. And even before we meditate, we might remember that sometimes I'm able to quiet my mind. And this very likely will be one of those times that I'm going to quiet my mind. In fact, even the night before, you might say, I'm going to take my negative self to bed. And while I sleep, momentum is going to subside a great deal. And when I wake up in the morning, I won't be my negative self like I am right now. I'll be lighter. And so the first thing when I wake up, I'll get something to drink and I'll go and I will meditate. And I will see what happens. And if you will do that, you will show yourself that you can quiet your mind. And if you quiet your mind, you will show yourself that thoughts will come into your mind. You'll be in the receiving mode of eventually really good impulses and ideas. We're not really right now with you wanting to talk too much about preparation. That's how you got so stubborn. We want you to sneak up on yourself. <laughs> First thing in the morning before you realize it's you. <laughs> and sit to meditate and find out who you really are just for a minute. And then come out of it feeling so much better than you usually feel and in the vicinity of more good feeling thoughts. And if you do that consistently, you will discover your power. You have a lot of power and we're playing with you a little bit. You are also creative. Abraham, am I not utilizing the effective utilization of my mind because something else was meant to be? No, you're just lazy. Abraham, am I afraid that I'll get what I really want? No, you're just lazy. Abraham, is it possible for me to have anything that I want? Yes, but you have to let it in. Abraham, am I able to let it in? Yes, but you have to sneak up on yourself because you're not in the habit of letting it in. So what makes you want to defend what is? What makes you argue for your limitations? We were teasing you, but we meant it. Let's let you off the hook right now. You're not really holding stubbornly to a belief that doesn't serve you. Law of attraction is dishing out to you what you usually think. You're in the receptive mode of that. You're in the receptive mode of what you usually think, you see. So how are you going to think differently? Well, you could stand by somebody who knows how it works, and every time you do it, someone could tease you about it or climb your tree about it or correct you about it. But you know what would happen under those conditions? You would just become more defensive. You would just become more sure. You've had enough people in your life trying to guide your thinking and help you know that's how you got stubborn. This is my life. I'm going to live my life. Don't tell me what to do. Don't try to create my reality. I want to create my reality. But in the process, you see, when you get defensive, when you are justifying or defending, if you feel like you have to defend yourself against something, you make that something bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because you create your own reality. And you know why you do it? Because if I can create something big and bad and I can overcome it, then I'll be good. If I can defeat the badness, then I will be the goodness. But what if your way, what if those battles that you are accustomed to fighting with others, what if now you've got that battle fighting going on between you and you. Think about that. If you're used to defending yourself against others and what they think or what they want you to do, then isn't it logical that you would develop a pattern where you would sort of contradict your own desires? I want that, but it's not practical. I want that, but that's not really reasonable. And I want that, but is that spiritual or is that prudent or is that acceptable? You fight this battle with yourself unnecessarily. But when you quiet your mind, there's no battle because there's just the inner you. Hear this. When you go to sleep, there's just the inner you. But this part of you is ready to wake up and be like you were before you went to sleep. But when you meditate, there's just the inner you. But during meditation, the physical you joined the inner you. Can you feel the difference? When you meditate, 
your vibration rises so have you ever worked with someone who just goes through the motions they're pretending to wash the dishes but nothing ever gets clean <laughs> they said they made the bed but when you looked at it it wasn't made in other words they're just going through the motions not wanting to accomplish something well that's not who you are you want to accomplish something so do you want to accomplish meditation do you understand what accomplishing meditation means it means quieting your mind it means giving yourself in your physical body access to the vibration of your inner mind can you hear this fan yes. just now for the first time Esther used that fan to focus on to come into Abraham's energy just now first time she's used the fan in the room for that now we want to tell you the benefit of this fan it's not interesting there's not much meat in the thought of the fan no point in comparing it that fan isn't as nice as other fans I've heard <laughs> I don't think that fan likes me there are none of those thoughts that fan let me down no you just can't really find a contradictory thought about that in fact that fan is about as void of anything to think about as anything that you might think about isn't it it's not interesting but it is something to notice can you notice it close your eyes and just focus on the fan and when your mind wanders and it will because there are other things in your mind other than the fan just let the fan be the most important thing to you right now now that's just a few seconds of focusing on the fan did other thoughts come into your mind while you were focusing on the fan did anybody just have a pure fan moment <laughs> As Esther got right there did your mind wander a little bit some of all of it so if you believe that you were only focusing on the fan not thinking about the fan just noticing the fan raise your hand if you think that that's what happened to you and if your mind wandered raise your hand all right that's really good isn't it it was about half and half so now let's do it again only now now we've talked about it do you think that those of you who were able to only think about the fan will have that experience again and do you think those of you whose mind wandered your mind will wander again probably because now we've introduced a little conversation about the fan in fact we talk too much about the fan we've talked so much about the fan that the fan isn't as effective as it was if we hadn't talked so much about the fan are you understanding what we're getting at so thoughts are frequencies and they bring other thoughts to them and so if you get up in the morning and you find something to focus on for those of you who found yourself only focusing on the fan did you feel anything else in your physical body did you feel some detachment some space did you you did well then you know how to meditate <laughs> that's all it is it's just doing that and not doing it very well and next time doing it and doing it a little better and sometimes doing it better than others but knowing what you're doing and knowing what you're reaching for before long it won't be more than two or three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten or thirty days into the process of doing that before you'll find the relief of a quieted mind now the relief of a quieted mind just feels like relief if you've got something bothering you it will feel like relief if there's nothing bothering you it will just feel like sort of a nice state of being but sometimes these are some of the things that then begin to happen you may find yourself sort of moving during meditation you may find your head sort of moving that's really good because that means your inner mind your inner being is projecting the impulse and you're receiving it that means you're in the receiving mode 